We're at Plymouth Campground in eastern Washington on the Columbia River, and the last time that we were here, I discovered all kinds of things. Welcome back to Skatomaville. This is the reflection video for Volume 1, Episode 7. In this episode, I want to clarify and make better distinction on what I mean by onion peeling. First off, it's the most handy, most commonly used tool in my entire toolbox, right? In the entire mental toolbox of Scotomaville. I use it all the time. In fact, I don't know a time when I don't use it. And when you combine it with the cheat sheet on cognitive bias, man, can you move from awareness to understanding. In my original episode, I used it as a tool to uncover why we do what we do, to understand where those triggers come from. There's a whole other side I didn't present, which over the last couple of years, I've come to appreciate much more. You see, onion peeling can be about pulling to mind fabulous memories good emotionally rich anchors that you greatly appreciate as gifts and not just the traumas and the wounds and the difficulties. Let me recognize three fabulous men that have been wingmen and shown me the way through their mentoring and example. Galen Hoover, I'll never forget him working on our backhoe while we built his uh, waterfront property. Robert Kane provided drinks to my crew while they worked on his home. Fabulous example of servanthood and Graham care. Not just the examples he gave, but the ideology, the philosophy, the biblical principles that he imparted to me. My hope is that like a baton pass, Graham would call it, I am passing to you what Robert and Galen and Graham gave to me, and that your life is richer, more abundant, less traumatic and challenging as a result of following in the way they began. To say more with less words, I think onion peeling is about trusting yourself with recalling memories that have been long buried with events that you don't want to re-experience, but most likely you've built false beliefs around and they become part of your habits. The way to get there is through the mirror affirmations through video journaling, especially through the reflection of those during editing and at a much later date. Our memories tend to be popular in the sense that it's like a well-worn path through the woods. They are frequented as shortcuts to conserve energy and they become patterns and habits. But you can turn and go in a new way. My onus per bonnet on that is to recognize these men that have given me great value. And those are memories that I aspire to become like. 
You see, switching from the wounded Daniel, the rejected, as you'll see coming up in ep other episodes, switching from that belief system to the champion, the leader, the one helping others as a result of having done my own personal Everest and therefore encouraging you, you could do the same. So an aspect of being able to look back and recognize, wow, I've had a real problem with noise. Oh, I think I've had a problem with noise my entire life. I've sort of masked that or tried to deal with it, but I can't find the proper words when I'm pegged, searching in the midst of external bombardment and Peggy. And for the record, this is the third train in just 10 minutes. Onion peeling is based on a principle called neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neuro connections throughout life. Neuroplasticity allows neurons or nerve cells in the brain to compensate for injury or disease and to adjust their activities in response to new situations or changes in the environment. And changes in the way that you think about your experience and about your own thoughts. They call it axonal sprouting or a way that the activity that you put in your brain flows, either encourages or discourages dendrite growth. Brain plasticity is also known as neuroplasticity. It's the biological, chemical, and physical capacity for the brain to reorganize its structure and function. Neuroplasticity occurs as a result of learning and experience, experience and memory formation, or as a result of damage to the brain. Concussions or shock waves from blasts and accidents, things like that. Learning and new experiences cause new neuropathways to strengthen, whereas neuropathways which are used infrequently become weak and eventually die. This process is called synaptic pruning, right? Just cutting it off. And it's done by experience and by choice and by your imagination and by your recalling frequently. Although traditionally associated with changes in childhood, recent research indicates that mature brains continue to show plasticity as a result of learning. Let's look at that a little bit. Old dogs can learn new tricks. Neurons communicate with one another by exchanging either electrical or chemical signals across tiny gaps where two neurons meet, called synapses. The signals can be either excitatory or inhibitory, meaning they either increase or decrease, respectively, the activity of the neuron they're affecting. Neuroscientists have known for decades that adult neurons can change their firing pattern and responses when faced with new experiences. This implies 
that adult dendrites retain intrinsic plasticity that allows them to remodel. Dendrites of growing neurons compete with one another to form connections with their partners, and the presence of successful connections increases the odds of dendrite growth. The findings, published in February in the journal Neuron, reveal that competitive interactions matter when neurons grow and form circuits. In other words, the thoughts you have, the imagined storyline, directly compete to create new dendrites, new neurological pathways and memories. So I trust that a little look at the science will help encourage your belief that you have the tools to change your trajectory in the real world and that the beliefs you've been handed can actually be modified. The point I'd like to make as a reflection video, I'm observing my own transformation. I'm recognizing the positive side of role models that I appreciate, that my memories are becoming strong in positives rather than fixated and triggered on woundings and false beliefs. That's progress. That's encouragement for you. I believe that when you fully commit to your personal Everest, you'll have an abundance of new experiences which are competition for the old false beliefs. And the mechanics of it, the biology of your brain, is that it will create new pathways. You'll have new habits emerge as a result of the new beliefs that you've chosen. See how cool that is? You get to set the destination. Thanks for processing all of that with me. I believe it's gonna really help you stick to the pathway. I'm getting the heck out of Skatomaville. See you next episode.